Welcome to video two in the Intro to Grasshopper tutorial. In the last video, we made a simple flat surface that we'll later project the glass sponge pattern onto. In this tutorial, we will make a curved surface, a little more interesting surface. We'll start by making a little more interesting bottom line. Instead of just a straight line for the bottom of the surface, let's make a curved line. So I'm going to grab all of this and get a new start point. And I'm going to preview this so we can see where, where we're starting. And instead of starting here, let's start over here somewhere. Let's push it all the way to 20 for the X. A little bit less. That's fine. And instead of moving this point once to one other position, let's move it to several other positions. I'm still going to use the move component, so move. And this time, instead of getting an x, y, z vector for the move, let's just move it in the y direction. And we'll change the, the x direction later. And so I'm going to get a y vector by just typing in y. And then unit y, this is a vector in the y direction. And this is how far in the y direction. And in, in order to get several different vectors in the y direction, since we want several different points, I'm going to get the series component. And this is going to make a series of numbers. And by default, this series is going to start at zero. If I hover over, it says one locally defined value zero. That means zero is by default in here. It's going to step one. That means it's going to go 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. And it's going to count to 10. And so if I get a panel, we can see what's inside this series by default. We can see that index 0, the value is 0. Index 1, the value is 1, and so on, all the way to 9. And since we started at 0 and went to 9, there are 10 total values in here. So if I hover over here, it says 10 locally defined values. So if we wanted to change our step size, we can get, let's just type two, and that's gonna give us a number slider between one and 10. If I plugged this into the step in input, our zero index will still be zero because we're starting at zero. And our first, or our, our second one, which is index one, is going to be two, since it's going up by two each time. It's going two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, all the way to 18. And if we change this, we can see that it's the step is just increasing each time. Delete that panel, or let's let's keep that panel just for a minute here. So we don't need the step to be an integer. It can be any value, any real number. So let's double click on the slider, and this is where you can adjust the properties of the, the slider. So right now it's n, which is integer numbers, whole numbers. If we click on R, then it's going to give us real numbers. And so these are going to be decimal, decimal values with three decimal places by default. And I, I usually keep it at three. OK, so now our step can be anything with three decimal places. And let's actually change the maximum to five. And that's fine to keep the step there for now. And then how many points do we want? The default again is 10, and this does need, need to be an integer. So let's type a number between one and, or not one, let's type a number between 10 and 100. And so since we didn't type in any decimal points in there, these are all gonna be integers. And so now we have 26. And so this list is 26 values long, or tw it has 26 items in it and they're stepping up by this amount each time. And we don't need to do anything with the start because we do want to s the first value to be zero. And then if we plug this into our Y vector, we're gonna have 26 different vectors coming out, each increasing by this amount, this step amount. And if we plug our point into the geometry and our vector into the translation vector, now we have 26 different points here. So it's because there are 26 vectors in here, it's moved this point 26 different times. So let's look at those vectors by clicking vector display or typing vector display. And these are our vectors and our anchor point. Again, let, let's get a, a point component and call this start point again, just like we did last time. So now you can see there are 26 different vectors, and it looks like they're 
it's a little hard to see here, but we can do in order to see each one individually, let's do list item. And this component is going to take in a list of whatever you put you put in here. In this case, we're putting a list of 26 different vectors, and it's going to ask for an index number. And so let's type an integer between 0 and 25, because that's 26 different values, since 0 is the first one. And then let's type put this into the vector into the vector component instead, and let's see what let's see what comes out and so index zero is not showing us any arrows and so why is that that's because index zero the vector is zero so it's not pointing anywhere but if we go to index one we see it points 0.911 units in the y direction and then if we go two we can see that that vector growing each time okay enough with vectors with showing the vectors let's just plug this in here and we still have a straight line, but let's change. Let's get a little curve in this line. We're going to do that with a component called Graph Mapper. And so double click and type Graph Mapper. And by default, this is blank. You have to choose what kind of what kind of graph you want. You do that by right clicking and go to Graph Types. And let's get for this one a sign summation, just for fun. And so what this is doing is we have two different sine curves in it, and the output is actually going to be the, the combination of those. And so I can change this sine curve by moving these, and I can change this one by moving these. And this dark line is the summation of these two sine curves. So let's do something like, anyway, it doesn't matter. We can change this later, um, but we'll start with that. And so what the graph mapper does is by default it's going to give you a list of numbers between 0 and 1 and you have to tell it you have to input a range how many times do you want to divide 1 so let's input a range so that makes a little bit more sense we type range and we don't need to do anything with the domain here we just need to give it a number of steps and this output is going going to go into here so by default, this is 10. And so now it's outputting 11 different values because it's divided this. You can think of this as like dividing a line into 10 different segments. And when you divide a line into 10 different segments, you're going to get 11 different points. And that's why this is going from 0 to 10. And the outputs are just going to be where those where the points hit this line or hit this 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 curve that we have. And so this will make a little bit more sense when we, we change these according to this. Let's put that down there for now. And what range do we actually want? Again, by default, it's 10, but we have 26 different values coming out and 20, 26 different points. So if we put 26 in here, now we have 27 locally defined values. And again, the reason for that is that if you divide a curve into 26 different parts you'll have 27 different points unless that curve reaches around and, and connects back with itself there, you, there's always going to be one extra point or one more point than there than there are segments so we don't actually want 20 26 into the number of steps here we want 25 and so let's get a subtraction component you can just type the dash for subtraction and enter and then we, we want to subtract one from the count number and you don't have to remember exactly like why when you, whenever you're using the graph mapper or anything really exactly it's sometimes hard to immediately think about why the numbers aren't lining up but what what you should always do is just hover over and see how many values are coming out there are 27 values coming out and we need to change 26 different points so here it says 26 locally defined values here it says 27 and so because of that discrepancy, we know we need to subtract one from this number and put that into the range in, instead. Now we have 26 and 26. And so this gets to how Grasshopper handles lists. Lists are super important and so are trees. We'll get to trees later, but lists are just kind of the simple version of trees. Trees are like lists of lists. 
So for now, we have two different lists. Uh, let's get that panel back. We have a list of values here going from 0 to 25. And we have a list of points here also going from 0 to 25. And since these two lists match up, we can use these values to move each point individually according to the values here. So index 0 is going to change point 0, and index 1 is going to change point 1, and so on, all the way to index 25 is going to change point 25. And we're going to change that by moving each of these in the y direction just a little bit according to this curve. So I'm going to delete these now, for now, and I'm going to do multiplication. And so this is just going to increase each of these values by a, a certain scale factor. So I want a number slider between 1 and 10.000, let's say, because all of these coming out are, are between 0 and 1. We might actually want a little bit bigger values, and so we can multiply each one by this scale factor. And then we can move, let's get, um, actually we're going to move these in the, in the x direction, so let's get an, a unit x. So now we have 20 different, 26 different vectors in the x direction. And we're going to move each one of these points by these different x vectors. So let's get another move component. And the geometry we want to move are these points. And the vectors we want to move them by are these vectors. And you can see how it moved each point a different value in the x direction. Let's, let's visualize these vectors. Let's get vector display. These vectors and let's anchor them to these points. And you can see as we change this, and as we can increase this a little bit, just increasing the amplitude of each of these vectors, it's changing the position of these points according to this graph here. And so now we don't need to see these points anymore and we don't need to see these vectors, but we have a new line that's now curved, or it's not actually a line yet, it's just a series of points, and we can connect these points by typing interpolate, and it's this one here, this little spiral, interpolate, and this is um, interpolating a curve through a list of points, and we already have our list of points here, so we can plug these into the vertices endpoint, or input, and if we turn this off, now we can see we have a curve that is defined by all of these points. So it's going from 0 to 1 to 2 and so on, and just interpolating a curve. It's a smooth curve based on these input vertices. And again, you can adjust what this curve looks like by adjusting the graph here and by adjusting the amplitude. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll move this curve in the z direction, just like we did over here. Move, get a z vector, and a number slider between, let's say, 1 and 40.000. Now we have two different curves. And again, we can loft these by merging these together first. So let's get the bottom curve first. And again, it doesn't matter which one you get first, but for now, for some reason, I like to get the bottom one. And let's hide these. Now we have both curves in one component, and let's get the loft component again and loft them together. And now we have a surface. So as we did up here, let's actually rename this to create flat surface so we know what this component does. We're going to make, we're going to put all of this into a component like this. So we need to get our inputs and our outputs. So let's go back and define what all of these inputs are doing. So step doesn't give us a lot of information. So instead of step, let's call this div length. Did I spell that right? Nope. Let's copy this and get a number component and also call this div length. And the reason we're doing this is so that the component automatically names this, this input div length. And we'll plug that in. We'll put this into the component, but we will not put we will not put this one in the component. And that's because we want to keep this on the outside so we can adjust adjust what this curve looks like from the outside. But we can call this 
let's call it divs. So divisions, this is the number of points. And let's get an integer component by typing int and this little seven with uh, that's called integer. Let's plug divs into that and rename that divs. And the next input that we want is going to be this one. And we can call this curve intensity or amplitude. Yeah, let's call it amplitude. So I'm going to get a number component and just type amp. Copy this. Whoops. And plug that in there. And I'm going to keep one here, one of these number components. I'm going to copy it and put another one. I'm going to pull both of these out to the left. And now we have a, a wire that's kind of going through a few things. And if you want, you can click on this component, right click, go to wire display and hidden. And so now that wire isn't showing up. It's a little bit cleaner. But the important thing is that we have the amplitude over here. So keeping all the inputs on the left. One other input that we need to bring over to the left is the height here. So let's get a number component and call it height. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did for the amplitude. Copy that, right click here, go wire display hidden, and plug that in there. And so this way we know what, where the height is connected, just because we've called these the same thing. They're both na named height. And we can bring these over to the left. And let's call the slider height 2. Copy that and put height at the, at the top. So this is not this graph isn't going to go into our component, but its output is. And so this is a list of numbers. And so let's get a number component again. And let's call this um, let's call this point graph. Hopefully that makes sense. Numbers. Just so we know it's a list of numbers. And again, let's copy this and Plug this into there. Let's move all these down a little bit. So I'm going to pull the point, our input point, our start point over here to the left, and all of these a little bit so we have some room. Whoops. Just to grab all of this at once. And then we just need our output, which is going to be a surface. So we plug the loft component into our surface, and we can call this curved curved surface, hide this, and copy this again. So one of them can go on the inside, and we'll hide this. So this one will be inside the component. Let's grab all of these, and I think that's all we need for our component. We'll see if we messed up after we, cl we cluster it. So I'm going to click the middle button, go up to this folder, cluster, and now we have a component that makes a curved surface. Again, I'm going to turn the preview off, but you don't have to because nothing's showing anyway. So if we change this, we're just increasing the length. And uh, so is this. They're actually doing different things, but it kind of seems like the same thing from the outside. OK, now that we have a few distinct things on our canvas, we can we can start to group them. So let's grab everything that we used to make the flat surface and hit control G. Again, control G is for Windows. I'm sure it's something similar for Mac. And so now that we have a group, we can change the color of the group. White is fine. And let's call this group make flat surface. And then we have another group. Let's align those like that. Align these, move these over here, and Control G. Change the color, call it Mate Curve Surface. Okay, now we have two different surfaces. Let's keep going. Next, we'll make a circle surface. And in the next video, we'll actually make three more surfaces. Much more interesting. And don't worry, Glass Sponge Pattern is coming soon after that.